Okay, so today I'm going to talk about my, my recent research about the classification of constrained nonlinear Fabian problems with indicator variables. This is the joint work with uh, my collaborators, Andreas and Singe. And so our motivations come from the very famous sparse regression problem in machine learning society. So, for example, we have a features and a restock vector. We are going to minimize over the L2 loss plus our regulation term. And what makes it interesting is that in this case, we consider the indicator variable DIs, which controls the non zero beta i's. For example, each DI is zero, which forces the beta i's to be zero. And furthermore, we take a step forward to consider a more general combinatorial structure over the set of binary indicator variable DIs. And later on, we'll see some example of the indicator set. The first one is a very, very famous uh, uh, regression technique, which is called the best subset selection. Suppose we are only allowed to select k of the features, which can be captured by the sum of di less or equal than k constraints. And the second example is to prevent, uh, prevent the multicollinearity. For example, if we have a group of predictors which are highly collinear, collinear to each other, then we, we allow only a one of the features can be selected, which is captured by the sum of di less or equal than one constraint. And the third one is more complex. For example, if we have some hierarchy among the indicator variable, for example, if one feature is selected, which implies that some of other features has to be selected select as well, then we can capture this kind of hierarchy relationship uh, with the constraint on the binary variable. So more generally, we can formulate a more general uh, rank one convex computation problem. Suppose we are minimizing over a rank one convex function and in include the case of the uh, R2 regression problem, uh, problem that we, see, we, we saw before, and also it includes uh, the famous logistic regression. And the one thing that's worth noticing is that uh, usually like we cannot handle the, the first constraint. This is problematic in the sense that it's non-convex, which means that we cannot uh, solve it efficiently using the convex optimization solver. And there are two approaches in literature. The first one is the so-called big gamma approach. It, which replaced the, the constraint one by the constraint that beta i is within plus and minus m of the di is, 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 is one. But the problem is that uh, we do not have the big n value sufficiently uh, large big n value for free for regression problem and uh, are not the sufficient big n value with, with, without the, a cut of, of the true optimal solution. And a second line of research is the so called perspective formulation. In literature, we found Surya, Fantuni, and numerous Gunlet, uh, uh, to name a few. So, what does the perspective formulation do? Uh, so, let's take the simple three dimension case like example. Suppose we have one indicator variable and one, one continuous variable. And then, when z equals zero, it, or for space to be zero, and the epigraph become um, uh, a line that passes through the origin. And when z equals one, then it's the epigraph of, uh, of our project function. And the convex solve is just we can obtain the convex solve by joining the line within the, uh, by between the, uh, the origin and the boundary of the convex uh, epigraph. And there is an easy result of the convex solve just taking the, the precise function of the one dimension perspective uh, function, and then we get the convex solve. Now we adapt the convention that uh, the beta i squared divided by zero is zero if uh, if beta is uh, is zero. And this is plus infinity if uh, otherwise. So there, we found some earlier work about the classification of, uh, of the progressive objective in, in, into the epigraph. So the first one is about the unconstrained separable progressive function. We have a separable progressive function, and we, we do not have a constraint on the indicator variable. There are people that come up with the convex or representation. So the convex call description is just given by uh, apply the precise function for each of the for each of the uh, separable projective functions. And uh, today we have uh, Adam Perk, uh, Dung, and Fantuni, Dunlack, and then there are so many people that uh, investigate this problem and give the comments of description. And uh, it's, we also noticed that there are some uh, very few works on the constraint separable case, except uh, in recent research, we have Xi and Dung and Bashi uh, uh, to study the constraint case of the separable projective epigraph. And uh, we also have our earlier, some people work on the rank one quadratic function where the objective is the square of sum of beta i's. And uh, uh, Adam Berg and Gomez give uh, the convex solve description. And we can see that uh, the convex solve is, uh, is also given by some perspective like function in, uh, in the description. 
And based on also of the previous result, we make some uh, important observation. The first observation is that we can see that the computation over the non-zero immediate variable is uh, somehow easy. So I will explain later on. So for example, suppose we have the, the two set, uh, two element set Q, which is zero one and one zero. And the most simple uh, continuous relaxation is not, uh, in, in the sense that we just relax the binary requirement for DI and then we get the convex of distribution, but only for non-zero integer variables. You see why, like uh, taking the, the simple one one Kogati as, a, as the example, suppose we have arbitrary uh, number on beta and beta two, then we can shift the, 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 the sum of, uh, of two into one entries and then take the convex of, uh, which, which can always be represented in this way, arbitrary number beta and beta two. And the second observation is that all oh, the theories of uh, convex or relaxation, it, it penalized objective function when zi is fractional, it, which means it's less between zero and some of the non-zero indicator, less in the line between zero and some of non-zero indicators. So taken as an example for the one dimension of the static simulation, here we divide it by, by the projective function by z, which is fractional. When z is fractional, then we kind of penalize the, the, the quadratic function. And for the for the rank one quadratic uh, convex description, we also divide it by the sum of square of sum with the uh, with the sum of di. We can we can see that if uh, if uh, if di uh, di is less than less than one, then we also can penalize the, the term of the quadratic. And there is a geometry interpretation of the rank one quadratic case. Suppose we have a three elements at q, and the convex of q is given by the triangle here. And then we, we can see that the value inequality is zero d one plus d two squared with beta than one is the boundary of the convex of non-zero indicators. And if the if the if the boundary value inequality is not satisfied in the, in the way that the sum of d one plus d two is less than one, suppose we have a fractional solution. This star here, and then we can see that d one plus d two, which is the intersection of the parallel line with the, the two axes, this kind of me measures the integral gap of d. For example, the, the yellow line segment represents the, the distance between zero and the kind of captured distance between zero and this star, and the right line segment kind of uh, give us uh, how, how, how far we are from the boundary of the non-zero indicators. So now we are going to uh, generalize our observation and also all the, all the previous results to general rank one convex function. Suppose now the uh, ob ob objective function is a uh, rank one convex function. And we further have some requirement over the indicator set. So remember what we did for the simple quadratic case is first we need to identify the boundary of the, of the, of the non-zero binary indicator set. And now suppose we have them, we have a set of, a set of boundary value inequality beta pi times c, which kind of uh, separate, separate the set of non-zero indicators from the set of, uh, of, 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 of all the indicator variables. And second, we define the concept of indicator gap, which is the extension that what we did in last class. So it is, uh, we take the mean of the pi class C. So why this makes sense? So for example, if some of the boundary value part is not satisfied, then the mean, mean of, of pi class C will always give you a fraction number. And this is the last step is just take the perspective and hope we get the, the comments of this. And now this is the proposed uh, relaxation that we give. But unfortunately, it doesn't always give us the common so Let's take a counter example of that. So suppose we have the run coin for that mixed into the set and we the constraint that at, all, at most one of the indicator could be not there, could be one. And in this case, we found a, a value quality, which is the sum of the perspective on separate quadratic. And this one is dominates the, the perspective function that we proposed last time. And then we, we show that the stronger value quality together with the relaxation of binary variable give us the, the comments of description of, of set C1. So why does it go wrong? Why does it work in this case? So first we notice that the sum of uh, the square of sum, only one of the continuous variable could be non-zero because we have to constrain that the sum of pi is less or equal to one. So in this case, uh, the sum square of sum becomes a sum of square and it's actually not a rank function. There are some separate roles structure hidden in the in the in the structure of indicator variable. So the here comes our result. So suppose we have a rank one convex objective 
and the function, given the structure of indicator variable, is not favorable and average zero is zero, then by adding of the exact perspective reformulation, then we get the sum of distribution. And also, we can notice that uh, this result can be generalized to several cases if by using the disjunct programming approach, for example, or serum give us uh, the building block of the context or the description of each of the of substructure of the separable objective function. And then we can use this standard formulation to give the conventional description of, of the whole set. Uh, there's the idea of our proof. We just consider the two linear optimization problem over the original set DQ and our real life continuous realization. And they want to show that the attendances that optimal value or are bounded at the same time. There are several intermediate steps. First step is that uh, we, we can simplify the, the optimization problem in the, in the way that uh, the only non-trivial case is we spin all the beta i, all the b i of, of beta are equals. And mm -hmm. second, we can we can substitute the perspective into the into variable t, and then get the equivalent of addition problem. So after we do the do this uh, to the substitution step, we can notice that because the continuous where continuous variable beta i in our relaxation is unconstrained. So that we can minimize our beta i's, which give us a way to project out the continuous variable, and then we get included in problem of our relaxation, which is minimizing a times of c and minus the, the essential conjugate of uh, f taking value in minus t times. And there are several cases. If the, the boundary running quality for, for the non-zero for the set of non-zero indicator is satisfied, then we, we show that this problem has an uh, integral of and in case that uh, if the if the boundary running quality for non-zero indicator is not satisfied, then we can always get a better objective by moving the distribution into the origin or to the, the set of covariance of non-zero indicator. There are some special cases that following our general theorem. The first one is the, the best, uh, best of best selection problem that we see in the second slide. Suppose we have the case sparsely constrained over the indicator variable. And in this case, the, the conventional description of the, of the set of non-zero indicators is very simple, just adding the, this, uh, the sum of the i squared to the equal than one, and then together with the continuous realization on binary variable, we get the conventional description of, uh, of the set of non-zero indicators. And using our, our general theorem, we can we show that uh, the cost of, the, of this is p one. And another very interesting case is the strong hierarchy constraint that we did, that we introduced before. So suppose we have the constraint that the last the last feature is uh, is, uh, is weaker than the previous feature in the sense that if db if db is db the db is one, so it automatically implies of the previous previous indicator has to be one. And for this uh, for this set of indicator variable, so the value corresponding value inequality, the boundary defining value inequality. For the non-zero indicators is given by this uh, value, value quality. And based on our general theorem, we, we can easily get the current description of this set. So uh, after we study the rank one complex objective function, we we, 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 we can we extend our result to the mixed integer epigra with separable complex objects. So suppose the objective function is the sum of separable complex functions for each of the continuous variable beta i's. Then the comments, or we, we prove that the comments of distribution can be easily get by applying the perspective formulation for each of the fun, uh, separate, for each of the component function advice. And we can see that the perspective formulation is applied here and it directly gives us the comments of distribution. So here is our computation study. So basically we compare our, our reformulation technique that taken the advantage of the combinatorial structure of indicator with the appearance of the to propose a relaxation. The first one is the so-called dynamic perspective uh, relaxation, which is proposed by Doom in 2015. Basically, what this does is to decompose the progress term, term in the regression problem as uh, uh, the sum of a diagonal matrix with a semi-diagonal matrix and apply the perspective function for the separable graphic uh, part. And then we also have the, the two-dimensional run for relaxation proposed by Attenberg and Gomez in 2019. In this, it, 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 it does the decomposition in a similar way. For example, it decomposes the quadratic function, a quadratic matrix, a 
load dimension, one point matrix plus a semi definite uh, matrix, and then use the their rank one strengthening for each of the products. Right? And now the last one is or hierarchical strengthening that takes advantage of the structure of the hierarchical constraint set. And we should also consider the combination of the, of the effect of having both uh, the rank one uh, relaxation, the flat rank one strengthening, and or hierarchical strengthening. And we can see that uh, there is the plot of, of the for the regression problem on the database data set. And we take the perspective dynamic, dynamic perspective reformulation. And then we, we can see that or hack or by simply only using or hack to strengthening uh, technique, this gives us the, the, the same amount of improvement over over the over the lower bound. And uh, or hack to strengthening doesn't uh, for a lot of extra runtime compared with the, the rank one strategy. And the best, uh, the, the, the use of the combination of the rank one and the war has to strengthening gives the best uh, relaxation. And so to summarize our research, first is that we, we propose a general framework that can strengthen the perspective simulation by using the combinatorial structure of the indicator variable. I think in the way we show that we can get ideal that compact formulation for rank one and separable combat objects. And that's it. Thank you for letting me. Uh, if there's an, any question, I will take it here. Uh, you're muted, John. Start. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, are there any questions? We can unmute you uh, now that I know how to unmute. Uh, no? No? Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, thank them.